Eight jurors were sent home for the weekend, completing day two of deliberations in a double murder trial in Kalamazoo. Yeah, they are set to come back on Monday with a big decision on their hands and the potential for a mistrial looming. Our Ali Jenner John tells us how we got here and what we know as we await the defendant's fate. Today, jurors told the court they aren't able to unanimously agree whether 18-year-old Takario Taylor McMillan is guilty or not guilty of breaking into a Kalamazoo Township couple's apartment and killing them in December 2020. They're left with what we know now to decide his fate. Going back to opening statements on Monday, the prosecutor says an innocent couple was shot to death all because of a dispute over a car. He says Takario and his older brother, D'Angelo Davis, used a bat to break the backslide door of 33-year-old Katoya McPherson and 36-year-old Floyd Brasher's Jr.'s apartment. He says the accused moved to the bedroom where Takario killed them both. Fast forward to Wednesday, Takario's older sister, Tanisha Taylor McMillan, testifies against him after prosecutors agreed to drop two counts of felony murder and one count of home invasion for her testimony. She tells the courtroom Takario confessed to shooting the couple and she later found him cleaning the gun he used. She also says Takario sold the gun to get rid of the evidence. The defense claims that Tanisha only testified to get out of going to jail. Davis was also scheduled to testify, but his attorney said he's pleading the fifth and no longer will. Prosecutors say that means the plea deal he took back in January is off the table. After closing arguments on Thursday, deliberations began and the jury just reached the end of their second day. When you continue your deliberations, do not hesitate to rethink your own views and change your opinion if you decide it was wrong. However, none of you should give up your honest beliefs about the weight or effect of the evidence only because of what your fellow jurors think or only for the sake of reaching agreement. If jurors cannot reach a decision, the judge says he may declare a mistrial. The jury will be back in the courtroom on Monday morning. After nearly 12 hours, investigators just left the scene after police shot and killed a man in the Vine neighborhood. News Channel 3's Chris Yu tells us more. Michigan State Police left just a short time ago after setting up a mobile command center here along Southwest Niche Avenue. Now behind me in that gray home, that's where the deadly officer involved shooting took place. And just a couple hours ago, we saw the man's body being taken out of the home. A major road shut down for hours. A busy neighborhood wrapped in crime tape. Residents are troubled by the scene on Southwest Niche Avenue. I just feel like the city is nothing but a, a, a war zone. The Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety says just before 1020 this morning, officers arrived at this home to investigate criminal activity. That was when a 33-year-old Battle Creek man with a handgun fired shots at officers, according to KDPS. An officer then returned fire, killing the suspect. We have a school right down the road, and there's always kids walking through here. There's a park right over here, so... It's actually right across the road from this, so it's very scary to think that this is happening so close to home. No officer was hurt. We also saw police take two young kids and a baby out of the home. It shakes me to the core. Uh, you know, I can't imagine putting my daughter in that situation or anyone else's child. And for that to happen, it, it's, it's very scary. It's mortifying. Also concerning the rise in violence throughout the city. It's like instead of talking... People want to shoot and kill each other. I love the neighborhood. It's got great culture. It's got everything. And, you know, it kind of makes you torn between whether you want to stay or want to leave because, you know, you want to stay where you want to live. KDPS has not identified the man killed. We're told they will hold a news conference sometime tomorrow morning. We're also working to determine what brought officers to this home in the first place. A former Kalamazoo, Lloyd Norris, foreign exchange student, packs up her things and makes a run for it in Ukraine. News Channel 3's Ellie Jenner John is joining us live in studio to tell us how she's struggling to survive while fleeing this Russian invasion, Ellie. Yeah, Trisha, that's right. Imagine packing your belongings in just two bags, leaving your family and friends and taking your life one day at a time. That's the reality for Ukrainian citizen and former Lloyd Norris student, Anna Udina. She's on the run to safety from Russia's attack on her home, and she she shares her unimaginable and daily fears with students at Lori Norick's high school. It all happened in one second. My boyfriend called me at five. He was yelling. 
just crazily yelling because he was at work as like Anna bombs have started. Anna Udina recounts the moments Russia attacks her home Kiev, prompting her to flee. Just running away because I might be dead. Her life shoved in two bags. And also I have the sleeping bag. Ready to pick up and leave at a moment's notice. The problem with me is that I'm so shocked still that I am already in a safe place for a couple of days, but I still packed the same way I was packed the day I left. She explains these horrors to students at Lloyd Norks High School. She was a student there herself in 2014. Yadina tells them it's a war Ukrainians were expecting, but one they tried hard to deny. Now she's separated from family and friends. When I go outside, I, every single sound, like just the car running, it's just like I in even rock like shift and I hear bombs. When I call my mom and dad, I, I, I just wish they they pick up the phone. She focuses on surviving one day at a time. We don't know if we have the future. We don't know if we have the place to return to. So basically, we, our lives are completely renewed. We don't have past anymore. While her country tries to fight off the Russian invaders, Yudina tells students she places her hope on three things. It's our army. It's God. And it's that person who kills him. Yadina says Ukrainians are thankful for the money and support they've received and people just talking and sharing information about what's going on.